Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Mishpokah. Welcome to another edition of the Ponderings of the Pirkei Avot. Today we're going to be discussing Pirkei Avot, chapter 4, uh, verses uh, 11 through 13. And it says, Rabbi Jonathan would say, Whoever fulfills the Torah in poverty will ultimately fulfill it in wealth, and whoever neglects the Torah in wealth will ultimately uh, neglect it in poverty. Rabbi Mir would say, Engage minimally in business and occupy yourself with Torah. Be humble before every man. If you neglect the Torah, there will be many more causes for neglect before you. If you toil much in Torah, <clears throat> there is much reward to give to you. Rabbi Eliezer, the son of Yaakov, would say, He who fulfills one mitzvah acquires for himself one angel advocate. Who, he who commits one transgression acquires against himself one angel accuser. Repentance and good deeds um, are as a shield against retribution. And uh, these are reminiscent of what was said in Pirkei Avot 2.1. It says, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi would say, Which is the right path for man to choose for himself? Whatever, whatever is harmonious for one uh, who does it, and harmonious for mankind. Be as careful with a minor mitzvah as with a major one. For if you do not <clears throat> know the rewards of the mitzvah, consider the cost of a mitzvah against the reward, and the rewards of a transgression against its cost. Contemplate three things, and you will not come into the hands of transgression. Know what is above you, a seeing eye, a listening ear, and all your deeds are being inscribed in a book. So basically, uh, there's no excuse for, for someone not to keep the Torah. Um, and this reminds me of a blog I wrote one time uh, that, that brings up the question, is homemade Judaica kosher? Uh, <clears throat> there's, there's a big push for, for people to buy um, tefillin and, and talits and mezuzah uh, and these things that were made by non-believing Jewish rabbis and scribes in Israel and you know everything is meticulously uh, gone over and made sure that every um, I is dotted and every T is crossed not just from the Torah scriptures itself but from the Talmud and from the Halakha and from the injunction saying the tefillin has to be so many inches wide and so many inches deep and the letters have to be such and such a way and and people pay mega bucks for these things. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm not a rich man. If I were a rich man. Oh, sorry. Got into, uh, you know, fiddler on the roof there for a minute. But I'm not a rich man. So I can't afford a $400 set of tefillin or, or a $1,000 talit or, you know, a um, uh, $100 tzitzit or a mezuzah written by a scribe that's, you know, uh, hundreds of dollars. You know, so if somebody can fulfill the mitzvah themselves with a sincere and pure heart by writing um, you know, out their own mezuzah, making their own mezuzah, I'll tell you a story. When I used to minister in prisons, the Jewish believers were so zealous. They wanted to fulfill the mitzvah of donating tefillin so badly, they made tefillin boxes out of popsicle sticks. And a Jewish inmate who knew Hebrew wrote out the scriptures to be put in the tefillin. Then they found scrap leather from old Bible covers and whatnot, and they covered the tefillin. They got old belts and cut them up and made the strap so they can strap it on. They made their own tefillin. And I was so touched and humbled because one of the inmates made a set of tefillin just for me. And I wear them every day at Mincha. Now, you know, well, they're not kosher. They're not approved by a rabbi, blah, 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 blah. You know what? I don't care. You know, I'm a parent. And if my daughter comes to me on, on Father's Day or my birthday or, or whatever and, and it brings me a card she made herself, that pleases me and touches me so much more than if she went out and bought some kind of stupid Hallmark card. And I think God feels the same way. If you are so zealous to fulfill the mitzvah that you make your own tefillin because you cannot afford expensive tefillin, I think that means more to God than when you actually go out and buy expensive tefillin because you made it, you put your time, your sweat, blood, and tears, and effort, and sincerity into it and did it to the very best of your ability because you want to fulfill the mitzvah of Yahweh. So, yeah, I say, um, you know, homemade Judaica is totally kosher. You know, that's not to excuse uh, us not supporting the rabbis and sages who make tefillin and stuff. If you can afford it and you want a nice set, go ahead and buy it. But if you can't, by all means, make your own. So this is what, uh, uh, you know, kind of what I got out of the this portion of the Pirkei Avot. Hope you enjoy it, and uh, tune in again next time for, for the ponderings of the Pirkei Avot. Shalom, and Shavuot Tov Mishpocha. Bye-bye.